All right, we would like to thank you for being here. It's right at six o'clock, and one of the things we like to do is to start on time because we know that your time is valuable, and uh, we want to teach the students that when it's time, then, then we, we begin. And that way we can get you out of here and get you home as well. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming. We hope we are able to answer the questions that you have tonight. We're going to go over a lot of information. We're going to be sitting here at this desk because we're uploading the video for anybody that can't be here. Or if you want to go home and watch it later, if there's things that you miss that you want to go and see, it'll be on the KJI Yellow Jackets TV, which is the, uh, the link that we do all of our high school activities here. Uh, sports, uh, graduation, a, a lot of the activities are all on KJI uh, Yellow Jackets TV. How you access that, you can go straight to YouTube and you can search KJI Yellow Jackets TV or you can go to the Choctaw High School webpage and it's in the sports section because most of the activities that we do are sports related and there'll be a link there. So if you want to uh, uh, share this with others that can't be here tonight, uh, they can watch it on Yellow Jackets TV. Uh, so we'll be here because this mic will, uh, on the desk, will be picking us up for the, for the video. Uh, again, thank you for coming. We appreciate that. And towards the end, we'll answer some questions, but I'm sure there'll be many questions that you will have. We would rather have you ask those questions where we can hear you or where you can get the direct answer. And so that's the reason that the uh, email addresses are on the back of the handout, so that we can answer those questions directly to you. We really don't like holding a lot of people that uh, when, when there's questions being asked that, that it, doesn't, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't matter to them. If they're not interested in sports and there's some sports questions, then we don't need to hold you. Or if you have ROTC questions, then we don't need to hold you if you're not interested in that program. But we do want to answer all the questions that you might have. So because of that, we'll answer some questions and we'll get you out of here before 7 o'clock tonight. Our first part of our agenda tonight, I'll, I'll introduce myself. I'm Mr. Dooley, the freshman principal. This is Cormarie Bishop. She's the freshman counselor. And Mr. Crowder, one of the teachers here, he's uh, also involved with KJI, and he's doing the video. But first up on our docket, we're going to talk a little bit about the ROTC program. Colonel Jones is here, and he would like to share some information with you. Program. I want to talk to you just a very little bit about the Junior Health Super Program. So there's a lot of times there's a misnomer out there that high school jail LTC programs can teach people how to be in the military. We are not. That's the least of our words. Okay, what we're concerned about is teaching citizenship. And we use various methods to do that. And we have a curriculum that's provided by the Air Force that helps us uh, teach that. Citizenship and character. That's our vision. That's our vision. We're a family within a family here at Choctaw High School. Academically, we're not really that tough of a course. We have academic aerospace science, which I teach history of aviation, start all the way before Leonardo da Vinci drew pictures of uh, helicopters, believe it or not, mostly pictures of birds, all the way through the space race, which all, as we know, is really changing. It even changed this week as uh, we landed a rover on Mars. We talked about all that in the first course that I teach. Second one, which is for sophomores, we teach the how airplanes fly, fundamentals of flight. Third one is, it's totally a space course, starts all the way from uh, planets and what planets are all about, all the way through, again, the space race. Seniors that teach at Global Studies, which is uh, why we care about different parts of the world, how they develop into their beliefs and why we about that and uh, and in our last course which is for our seniors is a survival course uh, they have a lot of fun with that one the, we also teach a leadership course we saw all the way from just the basics of good manners all the way through Air Force tradition uh, military tradition government not necessarily the military part of it how government works and how we work into it we'll teach communication all that kind of stuff Citizens of character, our primary goal is to teach your students or teach you students the tools that are needed for when you graduate from high school, when you step out that 
door as you walk across that stage, what you need to be successful out there. We even talked about finances in our course. We even balanced checkers. You know, that's kind of gone out of the way of now. That kind of stuff. How do you do budget? All that kind of thing. Integrity, responsibility are two of our biggest traits that we want to put into our students. We expect things to be done on time, and they do get done on time, eventually. Okay, we do use uh, kind of a militaristic training method. It's nothing like you've seen in the movies. Okay, I cannot do push-ups. I mean, I can't maybe do more pull-ups or anything like that. Sometimes it would look good, but I can't. Okay, if I did, I'd be fired. And, uh, and, uh, but we do other ways of teaching discipline. Um, we, are, we are cadet run, okay, to some extent. We have a whole cadet with military calls chain of command. In fact, I'm going to let one of our future group commanders talk to you in this second for a few seconds. Whenever we have events, we have a lot of events. We'll go work at the uh, uh, food bank. Well, you've probably seen us at the middle schools and the elementary schools on Veterans Day when we go do our Veterans Day presentations. All that stuff is organized by the cadets. They figure out the planning, the timing, the money, if there's money involved. Right now we're in the process of uh, every year we usually have a military ball. Well, that kind of went to the wayside with COVID. We are going to have a ball though. It's going to be a masquerade ball. Here we play upon the mask kind of thing. The cadets are organizing that. It's going to be right here, actually. Um, not going to be eating at this year because we can't uh, sell that in the COVID environment. But the cadets are organizing. We overlook them a little bit and kind of guide them. But it's up to them. It is cadet run totally. When I come in in the morning, we put the flag up every day. I don't even have to say anything. We send an email out today, tomorrow the flags are going to be at half staff whenever they come to school because of uh, members of the COVID uh, victims that have occurred in America over the last year. Uh, the cadets already know that. When I walk in that parking lot tomorrow and I see the flag, it'll be at half staff. Cadets will do that. We really pride ourselves on being cadet run. We let them run it as much as they can, and then we get involved if we have to. Okay? You'll see us at some big community events. We're big in community service. That we usually pull out about 3,000 hours of community service a year within the organization. A little different this year, but that's what we normally do. All the way from picking up trash on the, the Choctaw Pickup Trash Day that we do at the beginning of every year as far as the high school goes, all the way through the Thunder Games. We'll go present the flags at Thunder Games. The last one we did two weeks ago at the Choctaw Times, You'll probably see it in this week's paper. Two weeks ago, we went and presented flags at the governor's state of the state address in the Capitol building. Uh, in fact, there's a picture of us standing out in the foyer with the governor or all the kids. I don't want to take pictures of me. Now, the kids standing there with the governor right before he goes and gives that speech. That's the kind of stuff we get involved in. And in fact, our high school has become so much known for it that we get calls from the rest of Oklahoma City asking us to do things like that. Some of the other high schools don't get involved as much, but we pride ourselves on it. Family within a family, every day when we come to school, my room is full, okay? Uh, COVID's made it a little bit different. Kids are in there eating their breakfast. They go get in the cafeteria and bring it over. They'll be in there listening to music primarily in the morning, playing ping pong, Play foods well, and then we start school. And we go from there. After school, we have after school events, we have a competitive drill team. You may have seen us at the football games on military night. We have a competitive drill team, both in unarmed and on armed teams, we have rifles, they spin them, throw them, that kind of stuff. They're not real rifles, they're, they don't have a, they have a big rod in the middle of the, uh, the bore in it, so they can't shoot a thing. But they're mainly for drilling. We go away to Dallas, Texas a couple times a year. We go up to Kansas City and drill against other RLTC nationwide. Generally do pretty good. Uh, we practice that after school. That doesn't have to be 
doing in school, and you only have to be involved in that if you want to be involved in that. We do teach drill after school. That's mainly a discipline thing. If you want to. Now we teach a little bit of drill during class. You know, left face, right face, that's about it. You know, how to say that kind of stuff. We do have a PT program also. We do compete against other schools in PT. It's usually pretty tough. Uh, our better athletes usually get around third, fourth place sometimes if they're in good shape. They throw some obstacle courses out there at us that are really uh, pretty amazing. Uh, we have another arm drill team, which is mostly the females. Um, the girls, they started about five years ago, they're placing now. It started out just a lot. We learned how to do some things. Now they're actually placing and winning things. Uh, basically, they do drill movements without rifles. This is the way they do it. We have an aero club that meets after school. Starts out at the beginning of the year learning rocketry. We'll take liter bottle rockets, uh, we pull bottle rockets. Leaders, fill them up with water, pressure them, launch them off a launch pad that we've built. We're getting better at it. We actually landed a few on top of the PAC last year, which uh, wasn't a good thing. But now we're building uh, balsa wood rockets and we fire those off to it. Uh, and whenever we're going to get a pump set in, we have a simulator in our uh, classroom and we'll work the computers and fly the patch up. Trying to get more sophisticated on that about five years. I hope. And I do some work like some type of stuff. Citizenship. That's what I want to preach, really. We love to have your kids with us. Your kids love to have you with us. A lot of camaraderie, a lot of friendships, a lot of lifetime friendships built within our family of ROTC. And they built at the high school, too. We support all the high school activities and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's probably about my time. I'm going to have a, one of our cadets talk to you. I gave him 15 seconds. I'm going to talk to you real quick. If you have questions, uh, please, we're going to be here afterwards. Uh, come on up and talk to us. Uh, love to see you uh, students as you enter into high school. Come to us. We'd love to teach you how to get along after you get out of high school, as you head out to life. Be it if you go to the business world, to the military, to college, if you choose to do a Motec type thing, let me support you in that, every which way, citizenship with character. Hello, I am Dan Kaffrowing, I'm the Alpha Flight Commander of the First Minister of the I've been in RTC for three years, and I've learned a lot in my time. Today I'm a few, I've been in second, discipline, responsibility, ownership, leadership, fellowship, and finance. In my years, I've also developed a friendship that may never be broken. Our guests treat others like family, because that's what we are in RTC, a family. In conclusion, our program is one of the best in the state, if not the best. I would be lucky and grateful to have your children in our Thank you. school no matter what it is that we need done whether it's cleaning up water that's uh, waist deep or uh, whatever it may be they're always willing to come and, and help out uh, so if your student needs to learn discipline or manners or anything like that they may already have all that but if they if they need a refresher course Colonel Jones at ROTC is always there so that's one of your options and all the electives you can find a video at KJI Yellow Jackets TV all the electives, there's a, the teacher that's in charge of those electives. There's, there's a video that will talk about each of those programs and what those programs involve. At this time, once again, thank you for coming and we appreciate that so that we can get this information out. The weather hasn't been very kind to us and distance learning and edge and virtual and everything and it's been a difficult year for us and I know it's been a difficult year for you guys and uh, especially for the students and uh, it's our hope and desire that uh, this will be in our past and as we move forward we can uh, we can do the things that we used to do and the, the way we used to do it and uh, without all of the uh, things that we have to uh, cut back on so at this time miss bishop is going to walk you through some of the what block schedule is how that's going different than what your school is this year some of you guys have older brothers and sisters some of you don't 
And so we're going to talk a little bit about block schedule and how that impacts your daily life here. Here you go, Ms. Bishop. Good evening. Thank you all for being here. Again, I'm Ms. Bishop and I'm the freshman counselor and it's a privilege um, to be able to speak to you all tonight. So I'm not going to read through this, but I'm just, I just want to cover some things. And also, if you came in and did not get a copy, I'm going to send this out to the middle school counselors and ask them to send that out to all the parents. So you'll, you should be able to have a copy in your email. So I'll get on that tomorrow and see if they can get that out to you all. The biggest difference between middle school and high school is that we are on block scheduling. So your students right now have a total of, I believe it's seven classes that they start in August and they carry those classes out through May. Halfway through the year, they get two grades and they're averaged. Well, on block scheduling, our students enroll in a total of eight classes. They take four classes first semester and four classes second semester. A block goes from August to October. So I just remember it as in beginning of school to fall break. So that's basically nine weeks. So whatever your student earns in that nine weeks, that is a permanent grade and that is on their transcript. They are not averaged. And then from, for second block, from October to Christmas break, they get another grade. So for example, English, they get a half credit for the first block, half credit for the second block, and they need a total of one credit or one unit to complete that course. Third block starts in January after Christmas break and goes to spring break. And then after spring break, that goes to May and that's the fourth block. So they take four classes first semester, four classes second semester, and the classes are 85 minutes long. So there's just an example for you of kind of what it looks like and where students get their credits. So I hope that's clear. So by the end of their freshman year, all students, they should pass all of their classes, not failing any, will have a total of eight credits. Let me jump in there about Summer Bridge. Yes. All right, and on the bottom of that sheet, it says if interested in Summer Bridge, see me. Let me tell you about how Summer Bridge impacts their schedule. If you're in a regular math class, it means that you're gonna take the first half of the algebra book the first half of the year. That's between August and December. You're going to finish the second half of the algebra book between January and May. And even though we're on the block, you're going to take math all year long if you're in a regular math class. And the reason we do that is because with a 95 minute class and have an algebra all year long, you get a lot more in-depth opportunity and a lot slower pace than if you were taking algebra only half the year and covering all of that, it would be very fast paced. And so if you're taking all your algebra, that's two of your classes. If you're taking science, English, and history, that's three more. That gives you five. There's only eight classes. If you take strategies, which is a required class, that gives you six. And that leaves you two choices for electives. If you're in sports, you're done. If you're in band, you're done. If you're in VOAC, you're done. Those are year-long classes. And so in order, if you want to take band and Spanish, or if you want to take football and weightlifting, or if you want to take uh, computers and band, if you're one of those students that's taken math all year long and you want to fit something else into your schedule, that's what the Summer Bridge is for. Summer Bridge, uh, and you have a copy of that schedule there, it begins the 1st of June, it's over July uh, 2nd. And Fridays are virtual days. Virtual days means that you're going to catch up on the things that you need to catch up on, and you're going to do virtual tours. I'll let you read that information, but uh, in the past, we've always had Summer Bridge here. The students have come, and we've been able to do a lot of things. However, a lot of the places that we've gone to in the past have restricted large groups or are not allowing large groups at all. And so therefore, most of the tours that we've done in the past that tie your student to Oklahoma, such as the uh, Chickasaw Cultural Center, the 45th Infantry Museum, the uh, Oklahoma History Center, the uh, Bombing Memorial, some of those places that tie them to what they are, who they are, as a student in Oklahoma, those tours are now going to be done on a virtual uh, level. Uh, there's a lot of programs out there, and we will guide you through that. We, we did it last summer because of necessity, 
And this summer we're doing it because we, uh, because it's still a necessity because a lot of those locations aren't open. However, this year we're going to offer you the opportunity to come in person and there's a daily schedule there. If you have cheer camp, if you have basketball camp, if you have football camp, if you have uh, family vacation, if you have church camp, if you cannot be here the whole month of June to attend, then this year we're also offering that opportunity for you to do it on a virtual basis. And I know some of you that just doesn't sound very good because you've had so many virtual days anyway. However, it does open the opportunity for some of you to be able to pick up the credits and be able to pick up that extra elective during the school year if you need to. Not everybody needs to, but if you want to do that, that is available. Uh, if you're Indian Ed, Indian Ed will pay the whole tuition amount. Uh, all you have to do is let us know. We will contact the district office and they will use your JOM number and they will take care of that for you. Uh, if you're not uh, Indian Ed, then it is 150 for the two credits. Uh, and that will take the place of the strategies class that you will see listed in your schedule as one of the required freshman courses. Uh, within that course, we do teach the financial literacy and we do teach the ICAP, which are two state mandated items that students must have in order to graduate. And so both of those things end up on their high school transcript as saying that they've completed those areas. And both of those are embedded within that curriculum. So that's available if you're interested. Uh, we, have, we will have about 90 places, probably more than that since we're doing virtual. But uh, you can start uh, any time that you would like to enroll in that. All you have to do is send me an email. That email's on the back of that. And we will get together and we will make sure that you get that opportunity to be part of that program. So that's the Summer Bridge program. We will answer a lot of those questions uh, individually. And so let me get this back to Ms. Bishop so she can uh, cover the uh, remaining part of the information on the back page there. Okay, so we're going to jump right in and discuss enrollment. That's why you all are here, in part, <laughs> I hope. Okay, so if you look down under the bottom of the first page, required freshman classes, those subjects that you see in bold are required. So all students will have to take in English. So it's up to you and your student if your student enrolls in English 9 or Honors English. And I'll talk about Honors classes in just a moment. As far as math goes, there are two different paths, and Mr. Dooley spoke on this a little bit. The intro to Algebra 1 and Algebra 1 is for students that need a little more time to review and process the information. Therefore, you take the entire textbook and you do half of it the first half of the year, and then after Christmas, you do the second half of it. So it's a lot of concepts, it's a lot of information, and it is the foundation for your math. When you are preparing for ACTs, different things like that, it's good to have a good solid foundation in that Algebra 1. So if you're a strong math student, you excel in math, you love math, then honors is good for you. If not, if you need a little more time, you like going at a slower pace, then please enroll in the year long. So when I say year long, that just means the intro is first semester and then algebra is second semester. So it equates to two classes. Social studies, it's just Oklahoma history. There's not an honors history. Strategies for success, all students will enroll in that unless you take summer bridge the summer prior to your freshman year. Science, there are a couple of different options. There's regular physical science, honors physical science, and there may be some of you that plan on applying for or have applied for the biomed program. So once you are accepted into the biomed program, you will take biology and principles to, um, principles to biomed. So if you turn over to the second page, we'll talk about the difference in honors. And I'm taking this from the teachers, okay? So in your honors classes, it is the same curriculum, I believe it's the same textbook, I've been told from the teachers, basically the only difference is they have higher expectations. There may be a, a little more independent work and it may have some additional writing with it. So your honors classes are preparing you for advanced placement classes or AP classes. So sometimes people will ask, are honors classes weighted? Honors classes are not weighted, but it's just the expectation of you doing your work on your own that will that will that will prepare you for those higher level classes. 
So we talked a little bit a little bit about honors. So these are just some things that I ask parents when I'm talking to them if they're trying to decide. If they have a student that's motivated, you don't have to get on them to do their work. They are very, you know, they're they're responsible. They want to do their work. They do the best that they can with their work. They are disciplined. They love academics. If you have that student, then I encourage you to take your honors classes. And I'm sorry if you're a student like me that kind of procrastinates, you put things on the back burner, you just kind of do things, you know, the best that you can, but, you know, I don't know, maybe you don't excel 100%, then you may want to consider maybe not taking the honors classes, or if you're a great writer, you love English, you love reading, then definitely take the honors English. So just because you take one honors class doesn't mean you have to take all honors. You can pick and choose, whatever suits you. So I just put a bell schedule on there for you. So that is what your day, your child's day will look like. Also, please make sure that you are signed in to Parent Portal. I know many of you already are. Um, however, because we're on block, having 85 minute classes a day, it moves really, really fast. Um, the pace is doubled. So please log into your, your child's power school and see how they're doing. Um, as, as an educator, we want you to be involved. We want you to see how your children are doing. And since you all are here tonight, I know you care about your children. So just please make sure that you are linked in to, to Parent Portal and you get those notifications for your child's grades. So what if you have a child that fails a block of a required course? I'm sorry, but I have to address this. So I'll use English again. If your student, you know, didn't quite grasp the first block, but then, you know, they pass the second block, that student will either be re-enrolled in that class or that student can wait and go to the EOC Tech Center. They offer credit recovery. It is $150 for half credit, so for one block. So that, that's an option. Lockers, due to COVID, we did not assign lockers this year. Um, I don't know what to expect starting in August, so I didn't <laughs> list anything there. But if we are able to have lockers, your students will be assigned a locker the first week of school. So on the last page, those blocks, um, they're basically just eight squares. So that's just to represent your student gets eight classes. That's the magic number, eight. So they're gonna have math, English, history, science, maybe strategies, and then they get their electives. The reason I didn't fill in a sample here, some students are gonna come in taking geometry. Some students are gonna come in you know, wanting to double up on math. So eight is your magic number. The only time you will go over eight is you, if you are a triathlete. You do football, basketball, and wrestling, or football, basketball, and track. Then you would just list all of those on your enrollment form, and then your counselor will go ahead and fix it later. And just something I, I want to say, when we enroll your students, every course has a course number. So when we put that information into the computer, all of our administrators come in over the summer and they create a master schedule. So all of those course numbers go into classes. So please don't think that we are deliberately, I don't know, trying to move your kids away from their friends or anything like that. That is done by a computer. Also, I do wanna say this, if your student comes home with a schedule, and they have all of their core classes first semester and all of their electives second semester, please send me an email, talk to Mr. Dooley, have your child come in for a schedule change form. I have seen students struggle with that and they're like, well, I didn't know I could change it. That's something that we want to change because we don't want to do that to any student. So again, just the required classes, I just listed it again. Um, talk to your child's teacher if you are questioning you know, I'm not sure if my, I want my student to go on to that higher level of math. I kind of want them to repeat. Talk to the teachers. They can tell you and make a recommendation as to whether they feel your child needs to go into honors or not. So they are a great source, so use them. And I also put on here, please keep in mind when you're making the schedule, if you choose to double up in a math, all students will be required to take a math through their junior year. Okay. All of the electives are on the back page. So um, there are some like cheer and palm that are tryout only. 
I want to, not to burst anyone's bubbles, but I will say Choctaw High School is a 6A school. We are a highly competitive school. So be very careful when you select a sport. If you've never played a sport before, just know that, you know, uh, playing time is not promised because it is a highly competitive school. So I just want to warn you against getting in a sport just because your best friend is getting in a sport and you've never played and you think it may be fun. So just have some conversation with, you, with your children um, and choose very wisely and be very careful in your, in your selections. And also when you get your enrollment form, your student will need to put it down to electives. Again, be very careful with what you choose because if a class doesn't make or a class gets full, then the counselors go in and they correct schedules and we will put in those alternates. Email is on the back. I would love to get your emails and I will answer your questions as quickly as I can. Thank you. Okay. All right, once again, just a quick review. Students that are here, guys, there's no reason for you to ever fail a class here at Choctaw High School. You have 90 minutes in class. So much of your work is done in class so the teacher can help supervise, ask, you can ask questions, they can help you with that. And you only have four classes. You don't have a history test, English test, math test. You don't have uh, English to study for. You don't have all of that piled on top of you at, at one time. You only have four classes. And if you're taking sports, at least three classes other than sports. If you're taking band, at least three classes other than band. There's no reason for you to ever fail a class here at Choctaw High School. A lot of our students struggle at the middle school. They come here, they start doing a lot better. It's not because we have a magic formula. It's perhaps because they don't have to juggle seven classes at a time or six classes at a time. But students, you do have to work. It is high school. We will challenge you, but not to the point where you will feel undefeated, not to the point where you will feel like you cannot survive. It is available. You will do well if you come and if you apply yourself. Uh, a couple things. Uh, also, a quick reminder in the block schedule. You're only going to have English half the year. If you hate English, guess what? We only ruin half of your year. You only have to have it until Christmas, and then you get a Christmas present, you don't have to have it. Or you only have to have it from January till May, and then we give you all summer to get over all the trauma. I mean, it's going to be okay, you know? Uh, so there are some built-in things that, that you will really enjoy about the block system. Uh, Another thing is, let me talk to the parents about safety. I'm telling you that with the Freshman Center, safety is a thing that, that nearly all of our parents leave, come back and tell us that they appreciate the Freshman Center because it's a safe place for your student to be in. Uh, nearly all the classes that, uh, that are in there are freshmen. There are a couple that are upper class because they're a, uh, upper-class math or they're in upper-class science, but uh, we have a freshman uh, commons area where you can go and eat lunch. It's a freshman area, uh, and so it's a safe place where you can be. You don't have to be around those that are 18 years old, and you don't have to be around those that want to pick on a freshman coming in. It's a place where you can gather, and you can gather with your friends, both before school and at lunch. You can be in the freshman center. Uh, we also have tutorial in the morning. If you come in here in the morning and you didn't understand your homework the night before, from 7.20 until 7.50, 30 minutes in the morning, you can go to any of those teachers' classrooms. They're in their classroom, and they are there to help you on anything that you ask for help on. And so it's really 30 minutes of free tutorial every morning, and uh, so that's available too. So if you come in and do the hanging out in the commons area or hanging out in the hallway or trying to figure out what to do when you get here early, you're always, a, you're always allowed to go straight to that, any of those teachers' classes, and uh, you can go in there, you can sit, you can have some quiet time, or you can get help on your assignments. And so that's another thing that we offer here for our freshmen, and actually all of our students, but especially our freshmen, so that you can feel your, your safe place and, uh, and, and feel like you're at a place where you're not intimidated. We won't put up with that, we won't allow that, and we do our best to make sure that that doesn't occur. Students, just a reminder that when you do enroll and you do pick your electives, as Ms. Bishop said, pick something you like. Because once we develop that master schedule, if we have 120 kids, that, students that decide they want to take Spanish, 
when we open up four sections of 30, and then we have 60 students trying to get out of Spanish and try to get into to computers, guess what? There's probably not any room in computers because we didn't create enough sections. There's probably nowhere for you to go. You're probably going to have to survive in the Spanish class. So be careful what you put down for because it's not always easy to change schedules once that master schedule is developed. Uh, there are circumstances that we do try our best to accommodate, but there are those situations where a lot of times the students feel like we're not helping them and that's not the case. It's just that we don't have anywhere for them to go. Except maybe choir or PE or band that have large classes, but they don't sing and they're not an athlete and they don't play an instrument. And so those choices aren't there either. So uh, just be careful, be wise when you get ready to enroll. Look at the electives. You have them all there, you can check it over. And unless you do Summer Bridge, there's only two that you have to worry about trying to get because six of your classes will be already identified. That is, unless you're one of those advanced math kids and then you'll have actually three choices. So for those of you that are looking for weightlifting that are football players, that's not on here. That's something that the football uh, coaches give us a list of, the, a list of kids, students, that, uh, that are gonna be weightlifters. And we go in there and we manually change your schedule. Uh, and accommodate that, uh, that, that choice. So those are the things that we wanted to address tonight. Uh, we told you that we would get you out of here by seven o'clock. It's 6.35. Uh, if there's a couple of questions, we'll answer them. You can come down here and we'll talk one-on-one. -on -one. But other than that, send us an email. Let us know what your questions are. We will answer them and uh, we will answer each and every one of your questions. Feel free to contact us at any time. And once again, uh, thank you for coming, and we hope that since it is a short period of time, you don't think that it's been a wasted period of time, but it's been a helpful time. So once again, thank you, and uh, we will be talking with your middle schoolers this week. Choctaw Middle School is Thursday, and uh, Nicole Park Middle School is Friday. So once again, thank you very much.